I want to make a, a quick little video just to help anybody that's looking uh, that wants to study the Bible more, especially if you want to do it on your phone or any type of device. Uh, this is a really good app, and there, there's many of them out there. This is just the one that I use. It seems to be the easiest one for me to handle. So we're going to go there. I'm going to just show you how to download it. And then I'm going to open it up and we're just going to kind of uh, play around with it for a little bit. So, you know, it's good for if you want to study the Bible, you can put it on your phone. Uh, after it's installed, you don't need to have the Internet. You can pull it up whenever you want and read it. It's, it, it's got all kinds of different Bible. You can have the King James, the ISV, the ESV, whatever, whatever version you want. And there's other resources that are that accompany, uh, accompany it as well. So... All we're going to do is search Google, and you want to type in my sword. All one word, my sword. And click enter. We're going to search. And you're going to see the blue phone with a sword through it, and it's just called my sword. So you can either go to the home page. I just go right here to the download section. Download my sword. And once we go here, you, you can donate to them if you'd like. Uh, you don't have to, it is a free app, but you can download uh, or donate to them right through here. And then you're gonna come to two buttons right here. And it's and I have an Android. So the latest my sword for Android, you're gonna wanna download the latest one usually is the one I do. So all you would do is click on that download. Now I'm not gonna do this because I already have it installed, but it's just, they're, a pop-up menus are going to come up and it's going to ask you if you'd like to install and it may give you a warning uh, or something like that but you always want to bypass that and it's okay to install and it'll give you an APK file and then once that comes up just continue to click OK uh, and just completely download it okay that's the first step then once you have it downloaded I'm going to open it. I already got mine open. It's going to look, well, first I'll show you what it looks like. In the middle of my screen, you see right there, it's got the My Sword Bible. That's what the app icon looks like, okay? I'm just going to click it. We're going to open it. And if you want to go into your settings, yours may look, mine's configured a little differently, but the original, you're just going to want, you're going to, want to go into your options, into your settings. And you can go to... Oh, where's it at? Oh, actually, your settings icon down there on the down right. It'll say download modules. You can quit and click that. And what this does is all these things here. There are seven new updated. No, I'm not going to update right now. You have a Bible, commentary, dictionary, language, book, devotional, graphic, and font. These are the that come... Uh, with the Bible. We click on Bible, English, click on English, and then the ones that are in highlighted are the ones I have, okay? But you can download as many as you want. You, you get the King James, the American King James, ASB. You can click all the way through it. All you do is, what you do is you check that box, check all the ones you want downloaded, and then you would click OK, and then you would click Start Downloading. At the After you're done with the screen, you'll see in the bottom left. For instance, let's say I wanted that one. I would check it, just like that. I would click OK. You see where it says Start Downloading? You would just click Start Downloading. Then it would download that Bible, and it would add it uh, to the app. But I am not going to download that because I already have it. So all right, we're going to close. OK, so once it's up and running, as you're going to see, I have the King James. At the uh, top left of the screen where it says KJV, I can click that. And it's got all the Bibles that I have on here, so I can click and I can change it. I can put it to the ASV, and then it'll, it'll have it in the ASV. I can click Easy English. There's the Easy English. I prefer the King James Strong's, just the regular KJV, because what this does, you guys, if you have the KJV, uh, not the light, like I'll show you, there's, you see it says KJV Light. That's what the light is. It's got none of the none of the Hebrew or Greek words, numbers that are right there in the words. So if we go to the King James, 
see it's got in the beginning and then it's got the Hebrew Strong's number it's 7225 now check this out if we click that the word in the beginning used for that is the is the Hebrew word Reshith Reshith means in the beginning and then it'll give you a, a definition first beginning best chief it'll give you a Strong's definition uh, from the same as gives you a word there then this is the first in place time order rank beginning first fruits first part first time stuff like that and then it will also give you I you got to set this up but it'll also give you every time that that phrase for in the beginning where, where it's the word Rashith Rashith, it'll show you that it occurs in the Old Testament because it's Hebrew. So in the Old Testament, it occurs 50 times. And then it shows you the phrase that it uses and then each verse that, it, that it's at. So it's used five times in the beginning. It's used twice as and the beginning. Three times for the first. And then you can see, you, can, you just click the verse like the first. See where it says Exodus 34, 26? So you click that, and that's the verse that says the first of the first fruits of thy land. So it's, it, everything just pops up like that. It, it's so, so neat, and it's so handy. Now let's go to the, well, actually, let's go, let's look at another one in Genesis. Let's look at Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, the word for serpent, now the serpent, it's the Hebrew word, nakosh, nakosh. It means serpent, snake, image of a serpent, fleeing serpent. Uh, the Strong's, it just means a snake. And it's used 31 times in the Old Testament. And, and the and I love that part because then it can help you study if you if you want to search for words and where it's used and how to find it. It's so so nifty. Let's go to and if you see the top where it says see where it says Genesis three one and it's got a left arrow and a right arrow at the top. You can click that and it'll give you the order of everything in the Bible. So everything to the right you have O or you have all or you have O T or N T. It's for the Old Testament and New Testament. And it's got six jump jump away marks. But in the middle where it says book, you can click, you can go to Judges, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Leviticus. You can scroll down Judges. They go in order, all 66 books. First Chronicles, Nehemiah. Go to Job. It's that quick. And then if you look to the right, it's got the chapter and the verse. So let's say I want to go to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1, and I'm going to look at verse 9. You just click it, and then it opens it right up to it. In verse 9, there goes, The thing that has been, it is which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And then each phrase and word you can look, you can look at, you can click the Hebrew, and like I said, you can look at what the word is, what it means. You can do deeper studies with the definitions. These, this is just the basic concordance. But it really is a very helpful tool in studying. <clears throat> so let's go to the New Testament. We go to the New Testament. We got Matthew, we got Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. It's got all of them all the way down to Revelation. Let's say we want to go to Revelation 13, 11. That's where the USA is at. And I, held, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and it had two horns, Republicanism and Protestantism, like a lamb, separation of church and state, and he spake as a dragon. So that is that, you guys. And that is an incredible study. But it's such a useful tool. Because like I said... You can just click, 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 bam. You can look up the, well, let's look up the Greek words. Let's go to verse 1. Well, let's look at verse 2. It says, we'll look up the word used for blasphemers in verse 2. The word for blasphemers is the Greek word. It's the Greek 989 word. 
and it's the word blasphemos. That's how it, the phonetic pronunciation. It's blasphemos, and it means speaking evil, slanderous, reproachful, railing like Satan brings railing accusations, abusive, verbal abuse. That's what, you know, is how I would say it. Uh, scurrilous, that is calumnious, against man, impious, against God. So yeah, and then it, it, it's a, it occurs five times, and it shows you where it's all at. <clears throat> so it's an incredible, incredible tool. And I'll show you my favorite part of this entire app is the search. See the search bar down there to the bottom of the screen? Uh, in the middle to the right, you'll see that little search magnifying glass. You click that, and you can search. You can search through the entire Bible, or you could just see where on the right where it says from Genesis and to Revelation. So that, that searches through the whole Bible. You can switch that. You can click on Genesis, and you could click on Ruth, and you could, like, you could click on Ruth, and then we're and then you can just type a phrase and search just the book of Ruth. You can do that for any book of the Bible. But I like to stay on Genesis to Revelation. Okay, so let's type in a phrase. Let's say we're doing a study. And we want to find every time, every time it says Jesus Christ. Click, click enter. Obviously, it's used. Look at all that overall, and it only has a hundred is the limit. Uh, I don't know if you can. You could probably purchase because it does have a premium version that you can buy. It'll probably give you more, but it gives you a limit of a hundred, and it, it shows you the first time it's used in the New Testament is Matthew one one. Matthew one sixteen. You see, let's do a more uh, a phrase that's not so popular. Let's do a search. Let's search for Tarsus. Tarsus is it's used five times. That's where Paul was from. You have Acts 9.11, Acts 9.30, 11.25, and 22.3. So it's very helpful if you guys want to study, then you can press that X, clear it, and you can do something else. Could type in God, Father of Christ. That shows up 23. See where it says 23 verses found? So in the New Testament, that phrase, you can find it. Well, it's not always that phrase. It's the words of that phrase. It's found 23 times when those words are found in verses. And like I said, you can just... It's a great way to study, you guys, because that because also let's say you're reading a uh, let's say you're reading First Corinthians eight six, and it says, "But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things." Okay, so there's one God. It's the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord. Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So the Father and the Son, they're responsible for all things. It all comes of the Father and by the Son. You guys see how that works? The Father used, created all things through his Son. Oh, it's incredible. And it's a great, great way to study. Let's say you want to find... Now let's look at a word here. Well, let's stay in that one. Let's see. Let's see where it says the Lord Jesus. Let's. It begins saying, but to us there is but one. That phrase, there is but one. Let's see what that is. It's the Greek word heis. And wow, it's used 265 times, so that would be one. It would, it, but it's cool, it shows you every word used, and you can examine the scriptures and put them side by side. 
and you can just study anything you want on here. It, it's amazing. It truly is. Then we can cancel. Then we can go back out. And then, you know, once you get it, you can play with it. And you can adjust the settings and you can adjust the background. And if you want it in the day version or the night version. So, it's in, and, and think about it. If it's on your phone, like I have it on my phone, it's I always have access to it. So whether I'm on the go, I'm in the car, I'm on a trip, I'm at work, on a break, or wherever I am. The Bible is right by my side. And, oh, the best part, you guys, too, you can make notes. Okay, so what you got to do, okay, let's go here. Uh, I'll give you an example. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. I already got a bunch of notes. You, can, yeah. you guys see that notebook with the, with the pencil on it? That's the note, notes that I have on here. There's, I got no notes on verse 2, so you click, click by the 2, and it'll highlight the verse. If you click the 2, or you can click the 3. Click the 2, it'll highlight the verse. Now, press on that verse and hold it down until the pop-up menu comes up. So you would press on, and then the highlight comes up, and you go all the way down to the bottom, and it says, Add, Edit, Notes of Revelation 1-2. I'm not going to do that there because I don't want any notes there. But let's go to verse 3. Hold it. And then release after the menu comes up. Add edit notes. Click that. Add edit notes. I would click the top one because I want to add. And then we could come down here and we could make, make a, a note. Let's say I want to connect this Revelation 1-3 with another uh, study that I'm doing. Let's say, well, that... Say I want to put Genesis, just put the abbreviation for Genesis, G-E-N, and then let's go Genesis 1, 26. I, that, I would put it just like that, Genesis, then I would space, then put a 1, a colon, and then 26. Now check this out, we hit save or exit right there, it's right on the bottom left, save, exit. Now we can open up that note by ch clicking on it. And see, Genesis 126 is now blue because now I can click that and I can read the verse. That way I don't got to go searching for it. I can, you can keep notes on each verse as you're connecting the scriptures together. And then you can put studies together. Oh, it's so much fun, you guys, going through the scriptures. So, isn't it? I just think that's like the most amazing thing that God has given us this, to do this. So, anyways, that's it. So... If anybody out there wants any more help or wants to know more just let me know uh, leave a comment or send me a message or email me however you want to do it so all right well god bless you guys i hope that helps and we'll see you soon